Welcome to part five on how to make edits on Premiere. How to make edits? How to make jug edits on Premiere Pro. Today, I'm mostly going to be covering things like one framers. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me show you. So first of all, what we're going to do is add some flicker before we add the one framers. So add an adjustment layer on top of your existing adjustment layer. So I'm just going to drag it on top and extend. You want to search for S underscore flicker this one right here underneath sapphire time and then what we want to do is keyframe the amplitude at the start to 0.25 again using this marker as a reference i'm going to head one frame back add another keyframe so this one is going to be 0.05 don't worry you don't have to go through the struggle of graphing just right click ease in and duplicate these keyframes so click and drag extend this is the result, but if you think it's too strong or too weak, feel free to increase or decrease the amplitude. I think it could be better, so I'm going to go 0.35 at the start. In fact, I just changed it for all of them and it looks much better. So, moving on to the one framers. Add it on top and cut it down to one frame. So, the first one I want to show you is invert. So, underneath channel, add invert with sapphire scan lines. This one underneath Sapphire Stylized, so add that on as well. And change the lines frequency to 100 and the sharpness to 2.5. So if you place this right at the beginning, you'll get this really cool glitch effect. That looks like this. Oh, it lagged one second. There you go. Looks amazing. And what you can do is also duplicate this, leaving a one frame gap between them. And if you just change the invert channel from RGB to something else. So let's go for red. Uh, let's go for green actually, yeah. You've now got a double glitch, which looks like this. The next one is kind of like a flick, I don't really know what to call it. So it's going to be just before this second clip here. I'm going to move that back. So the first effect I'm going to add is Warp Transform. And then Sapphire Blur Directional. For the Warp Transform, what you want to do is move the X axis left. So just drag it like around here and change the wrap X and Y to both tile. Scroll down to blur directional, change the blur amount to 75 and the angle to zero. As a result, you get this flick effect, which looks really good if I play in real time. You might not be able to spot it because it's so quick actually, but what you can also do is extend it, make a cut, and then on this duplicated layer, just get rid of the warp transform and decrease the blur amount to around 50. Set the brightness of the blur directional to about 1.5 or even two. Let's go for two. I think it looks pretty good. And we can go even further and extend this, keyframe the brightness, head one frame ahead, then set this to 1.5. Another effect is mosaic, if I said that correctly. So you can either add the sapphire version or the built-in one. Let's go for the built-in one because why not? So I'm going to keyframe both of these. I'm actually going to place it on both sides. So it's going to be one, two, three, four frames long. So starting from the first, let me just get rid of the keyframes. It's going to be 200 for both of these. And then one frame ahead. Let's go 100. One frame ahead. 50, 50. One frame ahead. 300 for both. And this is what it looks like when I scrub through it, which is not too bad, although I think it could be improved, but we're going to move on. The next and final effect will be S underscore vignette. So underneath Sapphire Stylize, set the rail height to one, keyframe the radius, and I'm going to go for 1.2. Then what I'm going to do is head to the last keyframe and set this to 0.75. Let's see how this looks. Uh, I'm going to use Smoothify to keyframe this because I'm actually quite lazy. So I'm going to press go. And this is how it looks. You can, of course, change the softness. I think it's this setting here. So if I increase that to one, it looks better than before. That briefly covers some effects that you could use for your jug edit. The next tutorial will be on exporting and it's the last one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.